was known as the Depressing Dragon. Because it was known to inflict not only pain and suffering, but depression <laughs> and sadness and misery <laughs> and depression. Whoopsies, I already said depression. But you understand my point? It was a very, very evil dragon, and no one could stop it. Until one day, the SSRIs came along and began to weaken the dragon. And then came along the SNRIs and further weakened the dragon. Followed by the tricyclics. The monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Until finally, the atypical antidepressants came along to finish off the dragon. Hey, welcome to our scene on the antidepressants. In this awesome scene, we're going to talk about all the different types of antidepressants that we need to know about. We're going to talk about their mechanism of action, their clinical use, and their adverse effects. In this scene, we had this dragon over here. As we saw in the intro, this evil dragon was dubbed the Depression Dragon. So this Depression Dragon is going to represent depression and all of the characters in this scene who were responsible for the dragon's death are going to represent the antidepressants. So let's talk about them. It says SSRIs on top of this suburban over here, so we know we're talking about the SSRIs. But we can imagine that this suburban over here actually belongs to the Secret Services. So Secret Services might be a hint that we're talking about the SSRIs. But even if you don't remember that, that's fine. Let's begin by talking about what the SSRIs are. So over here in the front, we have the sergeant. This is the sergeant over here. I guess he's the sergeant of the secret services. I don't know if such a thing exists. But sergeant who is leaning on the suburban. Sergeant leaning for sertraline. Sertraline is one of the SSRIs that we want to be aware of. On top of the S over here, we see a very tall ram. So this is the S tall ram. S tall ram for escitalopram. Then we see another ram over here. The ram is just sitting. The sitting tall ram for citalopram. Then we see two oxen over here. These oxen are teenagers. These are the ox teens. One of them plays the flute. So this is the flute ox that is a teen. Flute ox that's a teen for fluoxetine. And we can imagine that he is also mean, which reminds us of fluvoxamine. And then there is the ox with the parrot. The ox with the parrot that's a teen, or the parrot ox that's a teen, for paroxetine. So again, the SSRIs that we want to be aware of are sertraline, escitalopram, citalopram, fluoxetine, fluvoxamine, and paroxetine. So these drugs are mainly used to treat depression. Depression has been shown to be associated with low levels of neurotransmitters, such as serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. These specific drugs, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, work by increasing the levels of serotonin to alleviate the symptoms of depression. These drugs work by inhibiting the serotonin reuptake transporters on the presynaptic neuron. And now, serotonin is no longer sucked up back into the presynaptic neuron, which allows more serotonin to cross over to the postsynaptic neuron. And because we're talking about the SSRIs first, we remember that they are first-line therapy for depression, since they have milder side effects than the other drugs which we're going to talk about in this video. One thing to keep in mind about these drugs is that they work slowly, just as do the other drugs in this scene. And this is because it takes time for serotonin to build up between the neurons. It usually takes the patient 48 weeks after taking the drugs to show signs of improvement.
Okay, before we talk about adverse effects, let's talk about some other conditions which the SSRIs are used for. As we mentioned, depression. In addition, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, OCD, bulimia, binge eating disorder, social anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, premature ejaculation, and premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Okay, now let's talk about the adverse effects. We see this random SIADH guy who fell off the hill which reminds us that SIADH is an adverse effect of the SSRIs. So we see that this SIADH guy over here, as he's falling, was moving towards this girl over here. We're gonna name her Sarah, and she's gonna show up all over this scene. And the fact that we see the toes reminds us of Sarah's toes for serotonin. Serotonin syndrome. The development of serotonin syndrome is associated with SSRIs, as well as many other drugs that we're going to talk about in this scene. The reason why SSRIs can potentially lead to serotonin syndrome is because, as we mentioned, SSRIs lead to increased transmission of serotonin. Serotonin syndrome is characterized by an overstimulation of the nervous system, which involves flushing, hyperthermia, muscle rigidity, and coma. Now, it's important to mention that serotonin syndrome is especially associated with SSRIs, because their entire mechanism is to increase serotonin levels, as opposed to the other drugs in the scene, which have other effects as well. But it's really important to mention that if a patient is already on other antidepressants, such as monoamine oxidase inhibitors, that would be a greater risk factor for the development of serotonin syndrome. We note that Sarah over here specifically has a knife in her belly to remind us of the GI distress seen with SSRIs. And we can imagine that SIADH is not phased due to the sexual dysfunction and decreased libido. And these are other adverse effects of the SSRIs. Okay, now that we've spoken about the SSRIs, let's move on to the SNRIs. This group over here represents the SNRIs. And we can imagine that on top of this helicopter over here, there is a snoring eye. <laughs> this eye snores. Snoring eye for SNRIs. So these characters over here are going to remind us of the SNRIs. And if we take a look over here, we see on top of the helicopter over here, there is a doula ox. This ox is actually a doula. It's a doula ox. And we can imagine that maybe she's even a teen. The doula ox that's a teen for duloxetine. In this scene, however, she's not helping a mother give birth. She is helping a fax machine give birth. So this fax machine is going to remind us of the faxines. Venlafaxine and desvenlafaxine. Actually, desvenlafaxine is an active metabolite of venlafaxine. And then we note that in back of the doula ox over here are these two rams. One is on top of the mill, mill ram for milmazepran. And then there is a levitating ram. He is not standing on anything. The levitating ram for levomazepran. So just to review, the SNRIs that we want to be aware of are duloxetine, venlafaxine, desvenlafaxine, milmazepran, and levomilmazepran. Okay, how do these drugs work? Well, as evidenced by their name, they are both serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. That is, they act on both serotonin transporters on the presynaptic neuron, as well as on norepinephrine transporters, and they inhibit them. And thus, there will be increased levels of serotonin and norepinephrine between the neurons. And thus, there will be an increase of transfer of these neurotransmitters across to the postsynaptic neuron. That's how these drugs increase the levels of serotonin and norepinephrine and thus they are used in the treatment of depression. Other conditions that the SNRIs are used for are generalized anxiety disorder, diabetic neuropathy, and in terms of specifics, venlafaxine is also indicated for social anxiety disorder and panic disorder. So we can imagine this duel over here is sending a fax for venlafaxine to someone to alleviate their social anxiety disorder and panic disorder, which reminds us again that venlafaxine is used for social anxiety disorder and panic disorder, as PSTD and OCD. And in terms of duloxetine and milnazepran, they are also indicated for fibromyalgia. And for that, we can imagine five bears between the doula ox and the mill ram. Five bears for fibro, fibromyalgia. That again, duloxetine and milnazepran are indicated for fibromyalgia. Okay, now let's talk about adverse effects of the SNRIs. We take a look up over here, we take a look over here, and we see this blood pressure cuff. This blood pressure cuff that's high up reminds us of the increase in blood pressure. Since the SNRIs lead to increased levels of norepinephrine, they will lead to increased blood pressure. And the cup of coffee over here reminds us of the increased stimulant effects, again for the same reason. And again, we note Sarah over here with her toes, and they're in the coffee. Sarah with the toes for serotonin, 
because again, SNRIs can lead to serotonin syndrome since they lead to increased levels of serotonin. And again, this is especially true if the patient is already on other antidepressants. Other adverse effects include sedation and nausea. Okay, now that we've spoken about the SNRIs, let's talk about the tricyclic antidepressants. This part of the scene reminds us of the tricyclic antidepressants, and that's because these girls over here, who are also involved in trying to kill the scary depression dragon, are on this cool tricycle vehicle over here. So this tricycle reminds us of the tricyclic antidepressants. Tricyclic antidepressants work similarly to the SNRIs in that they inhibit serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake, and they are also therefore used in the treatment of depression. Now if we take a look at the specific types of tricyclic antidepressants, <laughs> here we have the prom queen in the front over here, and she is IMing someone. She is instant messaging someone on her computer as she tries to kill the dragon. The IMing prom queen for imipramine. And behind her is the prom queen with the clover on her head. Clover prom queen for clomipramine. Behind them is this aiming guy over here who's tripping. His head is an aiming target thing. He is the aiming guy who's tripping as he tries to lean on the tricycle. So the aiming, tripping guy who's leaning for amitriptyline. These three drugs are actually tertiary or non-selective tricyclic antidepressants, which inhibit both serotonin and norepinephrine. Then we come to the secondary tricyclic antidepressants. Represented by this girl over here, the prom queen with the dessert on her head. She is the dessert prom queen. Dessert prom queen for desipramine. And behind her again is someone who is tripping. This is the no sign that is tripping. The no sign is tripping again as he leans. No tripping as leans for nortriptyline. So again, the tricyclic antidepressants that we want to be aware of are imipramine, clomipramine, amitriptyline, desipramine, and nortriptyline. Desipramine and nortriptyline are actually secondary tricyclic antidepressants which selectively only inhibit norepinephrine, norepinephrine reuptake. Tricyclic antidepressants are used in the treatment, again, as we mentioned, of depression, but also in the treatment of peripheral neuropathy, chronic pain, migraine prophylaxis, and clomipramine itself is used to treat OCD. And for that, we can imagine that this clover prom queen over here has OCD, and therefore is very particular about the way the prom queen in front of her is typing. In mipramine, is used in the treatment of nocturnal enuresis, or bedwetting. Maybe the prom queen in the front is IMing someone about nocturnal enuresis. Okay, now let's talk about the adverse effects of the tricyclic antidepressants. And there are actually a lot of them, which is why tricyclic antidepressants are not first-line treatment for depression. They are usually only used when there is no response to other drugs. Over here we see the three C's. The three C's are three extreme adverse effects of the tricyclic antidepressants. C for convulsions, represented by this C over here who's having convulsions. C for coma, represented by the C in a coma. And C for cardiotoxicity, represented by this C over here with the heart inside of him that's exploding. And the prolonged QT that's coming in out of him reminds us of the prolonged QT that the tricyclic antidepressants can cause. He is sitting on this blood pressure cuff, which reminds us of the hypotension, specifically the postural hypotension, due to the alpha-1 blocking effects of the tricyclic antidepressants. If you recall, this C over here had a cactus coming out of his mouth, because he has dry mouth, as dry mouth and other atropine-like side effects can be caused by the tricyclic antidepressants. And this is because the tricyclic antidepressants actually also work on muscarinic receptors, causing anticholinergic effects. Other effects include tachycardia and urinary retention. And as a side point, the tertiary tricyclic antidepressants, amitriptyline, have more anticholinergic effects than the secondary ones, such as nortriptyline. Finally, confusion and hallucinations are more common in the elderly due to the anticholinergic side effects. Secondary tricyclic antidepressants are actually better tolerated. And as a final word, sodium bicarbonate is given to prevent arrhythmias. And again we note Sarah's toes to remind us of serotonin syndrome. Because of course, tricyclic antidepressants, since they increase levels of serotonin, can actually also lead to serotonin syndrome. Okay, now let's move on to the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors is represented by this side of the scene, where we see this jet over here whose passengers are missing in action. Missing in action should remind us of the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. It should be M-A-O-I, 
but it's okay because this is a play on words anyway. This jet guy over here had this sign that says, I trained female seagulls. I for isocarboxazid, and you can imagine that as I say this, the screen turns to ice, which reminds us of the isocarboxazid, trained for tranylcypromine, female for phenylzine, and seagulls for selegiline. Now the first three that I mentioned just now are actually non-selective. Selegiline is selective, specifically for monoamine oxidase B. It is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, specifically of monoamine oxidase B. Therefore, whereas the first three that I mentioned lead to increased levels of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, selegiline only leads to increased levels of dopamine. Now, these monoamine oxidase inhibitors are also not first-line therapy for depression because of their side effects. They're used mainly for atypical depression, anxiety, and in the case of selegiline, it's used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. And for that, you can imagine, out of the seagulls part of this sign over here, there's a car that parks. Car parking, or parked car, for Parkinson. That selegiline is used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. We take a look behind this crashed jet over here for the part of the scene which is going to remind us of adverse effects of the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Here we see the brain that's being stimulated, which reminds us of CNS stimulation. And the blood pressure cuff that's shooting up on top of it reminds us of the hypertensive crisis, which may include hyperthermia, increased blood pressure, tachycardia, and arrhythmias. And this is especially seen when the patient has a diet that is rich in tyramine, such as wine, beer, and cheese. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors are contraindicated with SSRIs, TCAs, and one of the reasons is because of the, the concern of developing serotonin syndrome, again represented by Sarah's toes over here by this part of the scene. Sarah's toes for serotonin syndrome. Other contraindications include the use of St. John's wort, mepiridine, dextromethorphan, again because of the concern of serotonin syndrome. Now that we've spoken about the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, let's talk about the atypical antidepressants. And that was represented by this last group over here. All right, so let's talk about these quickly for the sake of time. Bupropion is represented in the front by the blue propane tank. Blue propane for bupropion. Bupropion is the first of the atypical antidepressants that inhibits norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake. Now, it's not only used for depression, but also for smoking cessation. But it's important that patients with seizures should not take it because it can cause seizures especially in patients with bulimia or anorexia nervosa. Next, we see the mirror over here that is peeing. Mirror peeing for mirtazapine. Mirtazapine is an alpha-2 antagonist. I said that on purpose like that. Mirtazapine is an alpha-2 antagonist. And toxicity includes sedation and weight gain. This may be even favorable in a patient who wants to sleep and who wants to gain weight. So we can imagine this mirror over here gaining weight as it pees. Next, we see the very lazy drone. Very lazy drone for velazidone. Apparently this drone over here is lazy, he doesn't like to hang on to the helicopter. He's very lazy. Lazy drone, or very lazy drone, for velazidone. Velazidone is used in the treatment of major depressive disorder by inhibiting 5-HT serotonin reuptake. Toxicity includes headache, diarrhea, nausea, and anticholinergic effects, and it may cause serotonin syndrome. Next, we get up to the tricky drone. This is a tricky drone because it likes to hide on top of the helicopter as the helicopter does its damage in this scene to the dragon. But anyway, the tricky drone for trazodone. Trazodone has lots of effects, but let's talk about what it's used for. It's used for, of course, depression, but primarily for insomnia. That's why this tricky drone over here is sleeping on top of the helicopter. Toxicity involves priapism. Priapism is when there's a long erection. People like to think trazabone. Trazabone reminds us of both the sleep as well as the erection. Next, we get up to the very neat and clean sign over here, hanging down from this helicopter very neat and clean for varenicline. Apparently the people inside this helicopter want to be very neat and clean, not only on the outside but also in their lungs. They want to stop smoking and therefore they take varenicline. Varenicline helps nicotine cravings decline and that's why people who are smoking who are depressed may take varenicline as it is an antidepressant and it helps nicotine cravings decline. Last but not least to these ox teens over here. They're teenager oxen over here and they're on their board. They're in their Jewish engagement party, a vort. The vort oxetines for vortioxetine. Vortioxetine is also used in the treatment of major depressive disorder, and, if, and it may cause serotonin syndrome if taken with other serotonergic agents. All right, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the antidepressants. Take care.